So I would like to, to welcome uh, Ned Koch, who's here with us for this uh, ISLA conference. And uh, the title of his, uh, well, we'll actually have sort of an interview here, but it's going to be on Warp PLS and its application to research in business and information systems. Uh, Ned has been uh, well, working in the IS field for probably this, uh, a little longer than, than, than I have. Uh, he's, he's also a Latin American. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we were both colleagues in, in undergraduate studies here at the, at the Technological University, uh, Federal Technological University of Paraná in Brazil. Uh, and then after that, uh, Ned went on a, an international career, um, uh, taking his, first his PhD in, in New Zealand, Waikato, uh, and, and then later uh, working in several different distinguished universities in the States. Uh, right now he's at uh, TEMU, Texas A&M uh, University. And, uh, well, the, the, the reason for our talk uh, here, I, I, I could, uh, as I did previously before this, talk to Ned about uh, many of the things that we, we did in the past as, as uh, undergrads, but the reason for our talk today is Warp PLS. Uh, PLS is a kind of software that uh, attempts to work with uh, um, structural equations. And uh, maybe, uh, Ned, the first question for you uh, would uh, be in which ways uh, do structural analysis, structural equations analysis uh, helps us to solve practical and theoretical problems than other quantitative uh, methods would not allow us to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, structural equation modeling allows you to test models. Let's say, let's consider a model here where you have Facebook use, that's one of your variables. Another would be job satisfaction, and another variable here would be job performance. So structural equation modeling would allow you to measure these variables through, mo through questions in questionnaires and, and test whether this measurement is done properly, and also at the same time measure the relationships, the associations between these three variables, all of this at the same time. So structural equation modeling is a very sophisticated uh, um, method for data analysis, probably the most sophisticated that we use in, in information systems today. Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the things that I would like to, to know from you is we do have several other uh, software tools that uh, deal with uh, uh, structural equations. Uh, uh, and what is the advantage of using Warp PLS, and in which ways does this tool distinguishes itself from uh, other tools that are available in, in, in the markets? Yeah, one thing that Warp PLS does that uh, it distinguishes it from, from other tools uh, that, that perform this type of structural equation modeling, which is PLS-based structural equation modeling, which is different from uh, uh, covariance-based structural equation modeling, the, the traditional type. Uh, one thing that Warp PLS does that is different from other tools is that it identifies um, nonlinearity among the uh, latent variables in the model, which are measured through other variables called indicators, uh, which are answers to question statements in a questionnaire. Um, so what Warp PLS does is identifies nonlinearity among these variables, let's say, uh, job performance, job satisfaction. If that relationship between those two variables is nonlinear, what Warp PLS does is to identify the best fitting function, uh, nonlinear function, that best approximates uh, the relationship between these two variables, and then transform uh, the, the values of the predictor variable in this case in order to account for nonlinearity. So what often happens with Warp PLS is that uh, the, the path coefficients between variables, they tend to be slightly higher than if you do an analysis with a tool that does not take nonlinearity into consideration. Uh, and that in most tools, uh, they force model relationships among variables as, no, as linear. 
whereas the, in the vast majority of uh, the, the cases, the relationships among variables are actually nonlinear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the nonlinearity is, is more extreme, other times uh, it's less extreme, but uh, even when the nonlinearity is uh, relatively small, uh, uh, it, 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 it makes a difference in the calculation of the path coefficients. So the software is very easy to use. When you look at the main interface of the software, it takes you step by step through uh, the several steps involved in the structure equation modeling analysis. So that's, that's a distinguishing characteristic, uh, I also would say. Uh, and in addition to these two, WARP PLS also, among the PLS-based structure equation modeling tools out there, is, as far as I know, the only one that generates fit indices that give you an idea of the fit between the, uh, the model that you created and the data that you collected to test your model, right? So I would say, but the, the key distinguishing characteristic is the nonlinearity, uh, taking nonlinearity into consideration, uh, and that's why the name of the software is WARP PLS. So it, it employ algorithms that warp, that twist the, the relationships by applying nonlinear functions to them, which are found by the software automatically. Okay, I, I think maybe at, at this point of our interview, it's a good idea if I play this little video that you sent us uh, explaining how this tool uh, works. And then uh -huh. uh, after uh, the, well, well, our audience has an idea of how PLS works, we'll go on with our, with our talk, okay? It is easy to conduct a structural equation modeling analysis with WARP PLS 1.0. The first step is to open or create a project file. I will create a new project file here, since I don't have uh, a current project file created. So go to this area, projects, and I will create a new project right here. The next step is to read the raw data using the analysis. So I'm going to read a raw data file from anywhere. I'll just choose this raw data file here. Uh, software is telling me that there will be an import wizard uh, f that will import the source data. It will appear shortly. I'll click on Next, Finish. And the software is showing me the data that has been imported. This data has some uh, NAN uh, cells which are missing cells, which will be taken care of by the software in, s in step three. So I'll accept this data, go to step three now, which is to pre-process the data, and here the software checks for missing values, uh, checks for zero variance problems, and deletes columns that have zero variance problems, checks for identical column names and corrects them, and standardizes the data. And here's the uh, table showing the standardized data provided by the software. I will accept it. I'll go to step four, which is to define the structure equation model. Here I'll create a few latent variables. I'll create one ECU, electronic communication use, which is going to be formative. So I'll defined as being measured by all of these indicators and as formative. I'll save this variable. I will create another latent variable, which uh, I will call PROC, meaning procedure structuring or a team's uh, ability to uh, manage their work. I'll create another latent variable here, uh, which will be effectiveness of 18. 
and now we'll define it as reflective and as measured by all of these indicators. Now I will create direct links between these variables. So I'm here hypothesizing that ECU, electronic communication use, which is a formative variable, influences procedural structuring and both influence the effectiveness of a team. Uh, I will centralize this model graph to make it look better. I can show or hide the indicators here. I will hide the indicators. I'll save the model. The software will create a model structure in preparation for the analysis. Now I will proceed to step 5 which is to perform the analysis. The software will perform the analysis for me will show uh, on the screen the, the analysis being conducted. And now the software, uh, the software shows the results of the analysis, which essentially mean that ECU does influence in a significant way PROC. PROC does influence in a significant way effectiveness, but ECU when PROC is controlled for, does not influence effectiveness in a strong way. Here I can also save a number of uh, 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 parameters or estimates and I can view them. For example, I can view path coefficients and p-values which are also available from the screen. I can also view indicator loadings and cross loadings. And this concludes the analysis. So I'll now close out this window and I will save my project. Here's the project that has been saved. Its size is 158 kilobytes only and it contains everything that is involved in the project including source data and um, uh, the model structure, the model results, everything uh, that pertains to this project. It does not need me to keep reading the source data or even to keep a link between the project and the source data. The source data is contained in the project already. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I guess uh, this video has uh, shown a little bit of uh, what uh, uh, Warp PLS could do. Uh, for researchers that are working with quantitative uh, data analysis. Uh, that I remember that a f maybe a couple of years ago uh, uh, we, we met in, a, in an AMSIS uh, meeting, uh, I wouldn't recall, maybe Seattle or some place like that, and you were really enthusiastic because you were saying that you were just, you, you thought that you were about to get to the holy grail of, uh, you know, uh, decision making with, with, with uh, these statistical tools. Uh, do you think that you have already reached that and uh, if not, what do you still have to do with respect to Warp PLS so that it allows uh, you and other researchers using it to reach the so-called Holy Grail? Yeah, well, the, one of the Holy Grails is the identification and calculation of the factors, right? Um, another one of the holy grails is uh, the assessment of causality. Um, finding out whether two relationships uh, or one relationship between one variable and another is in one direction or the other. And I think that has and always been a very difficult thing to do, right? You, you find correlations between two variables, uh, but it's very hard to tell uh, if that correlation is just that they happen together or that one of them causes the uh, one variable causes the other. Uh. Right, right. Now what, what, the, what PLS does is it takes into consideration the fact that if you if you calculate the coefficient in one direction uh, considering nonlinearity or taking nonlinearity into consideration and then you calculate the coefficient in the other direction also taking nonlinearity into consideration there is a difference between the values and uh, arguably the stronger the path, the stronger, the higher the value, 
uh, would indicate would, would be an indication that the relationship is in that particular direction and not the other. There is also uh, other coefficients that you can calculate that suggest problems with the, the, the original direction of causality that you hypothesized. One of them is a um, is a coefficient that indicates whether there is a Simpson's paradox instance uh, in that particular uh, path that you're considering. Simpson's paradox occurs when the correlation between the variables has a different sign from the path coefficient between the variables. Mm -hmm. So a correlation is a bivariate uh, uh, association. So in a model, say, with three variables, the correlations between uh, or among the variables, among pairs of ver ver variables, and then you have the path coefficients. The path coefficients, they take all of the variables in the model into consideration at once, whereas the correlations there between pairs of variables, they don't take the other variables into consideration. So sometimes the correlation coefficient has a sign that is different from the path coefficient. That is... Um, a, an instance of Simpson's paradox, which suggests that either the relationship is, does not exist or the direction of causality is wrong. Mm -hmm. And there is also another phenomenon called statistical suppression, which is when the path coefficient has a higher magnitude than the correlation, mm -hmm. and which is also uh, anomalous from a statistical perspective. So what for PLS, what it does takes it takes several of these uh, coefficients into consideration. It reports them to the user and allows the user to use them to uh, test causality. And uh, you can go uh, uh, relatively uh, far in terms of testing causality with uh, that, that combination of coefficients. Now, the the holy grail. There is a this is the major holy grail and. Testing causality is not something that uh, I could uh, confidently say or PLS does because there are still many tests that need to be done with Monte Carlo simulated data. You create data first, uh, we then test uh, 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 the models, uh, to use a software to test uh, the model using the data uh, to be sure that your tests are, are, are effective. And we haven't done enough in the area of causality. Now, there is another smaller holy grail, I would say, which has to do with uh, uh, estimating factors. So doing a PLS-based structure equation modeling, but with factors instead of composites. Because PLS-based structure equation modeling, unlike covariance-based structure equation modeling, uh, usually estimate factors as composites. So it does not take measurement error into consideration. And uh, what we've done now with WARP PLS is to incorporate some factor-based algorithms that allow you to do a true uh, uh, factor-based uh, structure equation modeling estimating factors. And this is a problem that has been around for uh, more than 100 years. Uh, Covariance-based structure equation modeling, which is the traditional approach, uh, uh, classic approach for structure equation modeling, takes into consideration factors but not, does not estimate them. So it, because of that, it, it tends to be very difficult to do covariance-based structure equation modeling. You almost have to be an engineer, uh, a, a real expert, to do those types of analysis. Whereas class-based structure equation modeling allows you to build very complex models uh, with visual tools. So it's very easy to use it. But up until now, you would never generate factors uh, you would always estimate factors or approximate factors with composites. Mm -hmm. And WARP PLS actually generates the factors. Now, the advantage of doing that is that when you uh, uh, estimate factors to do the analysis, the path coefficients, they get a little bit stronger because dealing with composites, 
attenuates the path coefficients a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has been done already in version uh, 5.0 WARP PLS. It's already implemented, and it works. That we already mm -hmm. tested with Monte Carlo simulated data, and it does work. I was just wondering sure. here, uh, Ned, uh, being an electrical engineer and then having all these years of work in a business school, does the teachers think of, uh, well, someone with your background uh, developing this kind of tool? Do, do you have any troubles convincing them that you're in the, the right path? And... Well, it, it, uh, it is difficult to convince them, of course, because... Uh, I mean, mainly taking this evolutionary approach that, uh, that, that you have uh, taken in, in WARP PLS, right? So right, right. That's a good Bringing point, ideas though. from the biologists. And Indeed. Uh, the, 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 the tools, most of the uh, tools um, in statistics or, or many of the tests in statistics, I, I would say most, have been developed by the evolutionary biologists, mm -hmm. right? including path analysis, which is the foundation for structural equation modeling. Path analysis was developed by Sewell Wright, who was one of the founders of the population genetics um, uh, 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 area of research. And population genetics is critical for us to understand evolution. So when you, when you come from that uh, uh, type of uh, background and, and you explain that to statisticians, you can convince them. Uh, another difficulty that uh, one has with these methods that we're discussing is that these methods are iterative methods that are more computational than uh, um, closed form types of equation types of uh, uh, methods. So these methods, they, they, they are not really, they are a subset of what mathematical statisticians would see as legitimate uh, mathematical statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and many of these algorithms, it's not very easy for you to uh, prove them uh, mathematically. What you do is you, you do Monte Carlo simulations to demonstrate that they work. Mm -hmm. uh, there is mathematical derivation, of course. In fact, having done engineering helps, I think, particularly electrical engineering, which uh, deals with complex numbers, and uh, it's, it's a very mathematical type of engineering, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and the cattle mathematics that we use is very abstract. So having that background, I think, is very helpful. Uh, I also study computer science, right? But, my but, PhD is in business, but my, my master's is in computer science, uh, and that helps too. Yeah, but you don't have to scare our audience uh, away. It's uh, eventually difficult to conceive, uh, but easy to use, right? Yes, it is very easy to use. Um, that's something that I hear a lot from users of the software. The software is easy to use, and the method is also uh, relatively easy to use and powerful. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Ned, for this interesting uh, conversation. Uh, uh, in, in this conference, in, in the third uh, ISLA conference, the Information Systems in Latin America, uh, as it's an online conference, uh, we try to pre-record as a backup, but in Ned's uh, case, it's also because he has a commitment right at the time where we had uh, scheduled his presentation. So, so we'll probably have to do with the recording. But eventually, if you, if you can uh, get with us, uh, if you have time to get with us after uh, your appointment, I know it's going to be difficult, but uh, uh, if that's possible, uh, I'm sure that uh, some of the people in our audience will have uh, very uh, interesting, uh, if not challenging, uh, questions to, to pose to you and would all be very interested to, to, to get your, your answers to them.